Hi guys and welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy. Once again, it's such an honor to be with you and to share the Word of God with you in this class today. Before we get into that, there is the contact details if you don't have the notes and there is the banking details if you want to partner with us. Now for you that have been following with us, you will know that we are working in a manual called in a course called Equipping for Victory Volume 1. We have completed the name of Jesus and currently we are doing the armor of God. Today we are actually at lecture number 4 where we start talking about the defensive weapons. And uh, today we will be talking about the shield of faith. The defensive weapon, the shield of faith. It's so exciting for me to spend time with you again. Uh, we understand that as believers we have to occupy and we have to possess we have to take in possession what God has for us as New Covenant believers. And if you're joining this course for the first time, welcome. I'm happy that you're watching with us. Maybe you would like to go back and do the other uh, lectures just to look at the other uh, elements of the armor of God. But if you don't, then at least enjoy this one and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and to me today as we get into this lecture. As always, we just want to have a look at our soldier here and you can think of the shield of faith today as you're looking at the shield in the soldier's hand. Just imagine this soldier actually uh, kneeling down and hiding behind the shield. You might have seen these movies before, these um, war movies. You can imagine this guy just going behind the shield and just thinking everything is now protected. As the fury darts come, he's protected or maybe even just in a, in a, in a progressive uh, battle where he's moving forward, he's got the shield in the one hand lifted up and maybe the sword in the other hand. Uh, just think of this powerful, powerful element of the armor of God. Just look at him there. He's got the sword in the one hand to attack and then he's got the shield just blocking it. And as he observes those arrows come, he can lower the shield and, and, and take it higher just to protect his entire body. But keeping in mind that the shield normally covered the entire body of the Roman soldier. So you can think that today's session is quite important. It's important for us to understand this and just to think about this a bit and, and to really take this into your spirit because this is going to be something that can change your spiritual life because really a lot of Christians are living way below where they're supposed to live as far as faith is concerned and they are not having and receiving the full benefits of the new covenant. You know, this morning when I when I prayed and I spoke a prayer, I said that I am blessed, my children is blessed, my children's children is blessed, my business is blessed, all the, the, the property that God's entrusted me to steward is blessed, the congregation is blessed, everything is covered. You just go read the blessing of Deuteronomy 28 and you will understand what the shield of faith can accomplish in the believer's life as we start accessing and possessing what God has for us by faith in Jesus mighty name. So let's get into the lecture and just look at the session topics for today and you will find them in your manual. Normally if you go to your manual and you go to the to the front portion of your manual just where the course starts you will find session topics, objectives and outcomes and uh, it's, it's good to read through those a few times before you study the work because then you understand uh, what you actually want to accomplish. So going with the end in mind, you then understand that you want to today look at the spectrum of faith, you know, um, and then the word of God in the armor. How does the word of God work in the armor? I mean, in, in the righteousness, in salvation, every area of the armor. We're going to be talking a bit about prayer and all kinds of prayers and then standing in that evil day. Then the position of faith. Where does this shield actually position itself? Faith protects our inheritance, the purpose of the shield, and then the power of the shield, what, what fear does, and then also how faith quenches all, and then the, the enemy's darts. And you and I, throughout our Christian walk, we experience the enemy's darts frequently. We experience these attacks, but we must understand as we do this course, Equipping for Victory, that God has equipped us. We have the equipment to have victory in every area. Yes, sometimes it does look like we are under fire and we are under attack. But eventually, as we stand on God's word, we will see the breakthrough that we are trusting God for. And the outcome of this session today is after completing the session, you should be able to take up and use the shield of faith as a spiritual defensive weapon, experiencing its power and enjoying the freedom 
uh, from the enemy's attacks. And then also you, your objectives to develop a protective lifestyle. This is so important as we're dealing with the armor of God that we want to walk under God's protect, protection to safeguard the whole being, spirit, soul, and body, every aspect of your being, and to experience security behind the shield. Like I said, this picture of this soldier uh, just kneeling behind that seat, uh, shield as I, as I look at this soldier here, and I'm just thinking the soldier going right down, and uh, you've seen this in the movies, even where, where soldiers come together and they lock their shields and they, they, they form like a formation. And the enemy's attacks come, the arrows come down, but the shield just protects them against all those arrows. And then we see how these soldiers move together. This is also a picture, I believe, of the body of Christ and how we are supposed to function together as we build ourselves up in our most holy faith we must understand that we are also going to function with other kingdom children as we carry on in his kingdom so let's look at the lecture as we go through this it says this item of the soldier's equipment is the most important one uh, faith is a priority uh, ephesians 6 verse 16 says above all take the shield of faith which with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one so um, take the shield of faith uh, like our first topic is the spectrum of faith and I just want to ask you first of all as we start uh, this conversation do you know how to take the shield of faith if I say to you take the shield of faith how do you take the shield of faith now at the end of the uh, at this specific lecture there, there are some ways but I wanted to start off by just saying Romans 10 Verse 17 says, So faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. If we fill ourselves every day with God's word, if we fill ourselves with, with God's promises, uh, opposed to the problems that we are facing, we are taking up the shield of faith. We have to do this. This is something that we have to do because we live in a physical world. We live in a physical world, and we are watching the physical things with our physical eyes. And if that is all that we are seeing, we will be dominated by our senses. That, that means that like Israel in the desert, as they were walking in the desert, they, they were exposed to the elements. They were dominated by their physical senses. But what about God's word? What about the fact that God promised to Abram, Isaac and Jacob the promised land? What about the, the, the miracles they saw as God led them out of Egypt? They were still dominated by their senses, by their hunger. They demanded manna. They wanted water. They wanted food. They wanted meat. They wanted all sorts of things, but they were dominated by their senses. Now, when we, when we do what Romans 10, 17 says, and we read the word of God, and we read it every day, we take it in not just as a religious reading of the word, but as a place where we get to a point where we actually eat that word we eat it we drink it we enjoy that word it becomes part of our daily diet and we see those promises then we start looking with the eyes of the spirit remember you are a spirit you live in a body and you have a soul and in order to feed that spirit uh, and so that spirit man can rise up in faith you need to eat and feed upon God's word because that is when the spectrum of faith comes into play as you fed upon God's word and you can rise up that shield of faith you can raise it up against the enemy's attacks you will then be protected and here we're talking about spirit soul and body on the spiritual level on the psychological level and on the physical level i mean um the truth if you if you, if you consider the word of god in the armor uh, the word of god is is we've got the word of truth we, we've we've got the shoes of the gospel we've got the sword of the spirit so the word of God is an overarching theme in the armor because even if you're looking at the breastplate of righteousness or the, or, or, or the helmet of salvation, all of that comes through the word, through receiving what the word of God says. So here we've got the truth, which is the logos um, and the revelation. Jesus, like we said, the logos, the revealed word. We've got the gospel, the evangelio, or the evangelion, uh, which is uh, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and, and uh, God's restoration of sonship, full sonship for us. And then we've got the Word of God where we talk about the rhema, and this is the spoken word where, where the logos is quickened, it becomes the rhema. We can then hear 
it, but it has to be mixed with faith. So receiving the word is not enough. Remember, we spoke in the previous lecture. If you if you were here and you watched that previous lecture, we spoke about the sower sowing the seed. So there's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the word. The problem is with the condition of man's heart. That is what makes the difference between no return, between a 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold uh, harvest that comes in as the word comes into our hearts. So when you listen to the word, even today, you have a, a heart condition and that determines what your faith condition will be as your heart condition is. And you need to open up your heart and say, Lord, I want to receive your word. I want to receive your promises. So um, the word of God is there, but it's only activated by the substance of faith. And we need to really understand that. Here's the story about Israel where they refused to believe God's word. They were governed by their physical circumstances. But what does it say in Mark 16? It says he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we are preaching the gospel to every creature. He who believes will be saved, not just salvation, but he says, and these signs will follow them that believe. When the word of God is mixed with faith, signs, miracles, and wonders follow. Now, I don't know what your uh, your theological um, conviction is here as far as, uh, you know, you get dispensationalism where, where, where um, a, a portion of the evangelical church believes that uh, the signs, miracles and wonders have ceased. So you might have a problem with what I'm saying now. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at God's deeds throughout the Bible, if you look from Genesis straight through uh, I had a sermon, and I, I mentioned this in, in, in my previous lecture, but I had a sermon called But God, where I looked at all the miraculous manifestations that God had in His dealing with, with the Hebrew people, with the descendants of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, just like all those miracles that took place, even Isaac sowing in, 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 in a time of famine and, uh, and reaping a hundredfold return, uh, the way God uh, uh, raised up Abram, and even how Isaac was born when, when Abram could no longer bear children, it was impossible. But God made it possible. Uh, how God blessed Jacob, how he blessed Isaac. And, and we can see what happened to Isaac. Just look at Joseph and the story of Joseph. And, and then we, we've, we've got Israel coming out of Egypt with signs, miracles and wonders. Uh, uh, and we've got them even going out with the wealth. We, it says that the Egyptians were favorably disposed towards them and they plundered the Egyptians, Egyptians as they left on Passover. They left with great wealth. We just see miracle after miracle, even in the times of the kings, the times of the judges, the times of the prophets. I can name thousands of them. Then we see Jesus uh, coming on the scene and also walking in signs, miracles and wonders and in power. And then we see the first church born in, in Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, as we, see, as we see the church being born there or born there. And we see signs, miracles and wonders. Now, it, it's my understanding as I study the entire scripture that I can see the miraculous. And I understand that uh, when we look at the Great Commission text, even Matthew 28, Mark 16, we see that the Lord's actually commanded the church to function this way. And even the Apostle Paul said to the church of Corinth, I didn't come to you with persuasive with words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. But if you and I, as we are sitting here today, if we have a theological challenge with this and we don't really believe it, we can't receive it because these things, these promises of God are accessed by faith. We have to take them by faith. So if we can't believe it, we can't receive it. This is something that, that you're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart about. We've got salvation in the armor. We've got all kinds of prayers. Um, it says, yeah, you, you know, if you doubt in James 1, 16, let him, who ask, let him ask in faith, noth nothing doubting. For he who doubts, let that man not suppose that he will receive anything. So we are accessing by faith. And if you don't believe in something, how can you ask in faith? How can you receive it? It says uh, faithful prayer uh, is effective in receiving those things promised in God's word. And then we're talking about standing in that evil day. And, uh, you, you know, without faith, the soldier is totally unqualified for battle. So we, it says in Romans 14, 23, that uh, whatsoever does not originate and proceed from faith is sin. Uh, so we, we get discouraged. Um, 
We can get discouragement. We can get sickness. We can get temptation, backsliding, calamity, weakness. And, you know, this puts us in a position where the devil overcomes us as believers. And sometimes our confusion as far as theology is concerned has put us in a position where we are unfit and untrained and and unskilled in the word and we can't fight we can't stand against the walls of the of the devil and then the devil comes and steal kills and destroy so we must understand that that's what happens he comes to steal kill and destroy now the area of protection if you read through these sections you will see that but the the area of protection is that all the other parts of the soldier's equipment like i said in the beginning and the anatomy of the soldier everything is protected by faith so this is an overarching a protection measure that we have is faith as we build ourselves up the lord warned peter and he said to peter peter the the devil has has asked to sift you but i've prayed for you that your faith fail not and when you return strengthen your brethren see a lot of times when we've had a trial of faith when we've when we've gone through something uh, we come from the trial we move into a testimony praise god we get to a praise where we have something to say about that. And I've got so many testimonies in my life that sometimes while my lectures go slightly too long because I'm always testifying. When I read these scriptures, when I read these uh, these topics, I get excited because these are things that we didn't just read in the book here, but it's something that we've lived. I've, I've had disease upon my body and I've had to fight that and, and make a decision. Am I a dispensationalist who believes that, that healing um, has ceased or it was just part of the apostolic era or do i believe that healing is part of today's covenant that i have with the lord by stripes i've been healed I've, and then i can activate and receive that healing and then stand upon god's word in faith until that healing manifests then faith becomes the substance in other words the promise becomes what i actually believe not the physical things that i see and this is the problem with the church. A lot of us, we walk by sight and not by faith. Where the Bible says now we have to walk by faith and not by sight. It's a subtle difference, but it's a big difference if you consider that. So then also, um, faith protects our inheritance. You can read these scriptures, but it says uh, those who are called, uh, uh, are called may receive their promised inheritance, eternal inheritance. And this is by faith. So we have to receive by faith the purpose of the shield. Uh, the Lord, it says here in Genesis, do not be afraid. I am your shield. So the purpose of the shield is to protect us. The purpose of the shield is to give us courage so that we can stand with boldness in faith. Uh, just It says here, be strong and very courageous. And then we look at, at Joshua and Caleb and uh, even in Joshua uh, in the first book of jo uh, Joshua where the Lord writes to Joshua it says be strong be courageous be strong be courageous do not fear be strong be, be courageous you know what the problem was that although God promised Canaan to Abram Isaac and Jacob and and the first generation of of the Hebrew nation died you know in the desert the first desert generation died it was only Joshua and Caleb that were left and because they went into the promised land to spy out the land. And of the 12 spies, they were the only ones who came back with a good report where they said, we can't take the, the land. The other spies said, we can't do it. We can't do it. There are giants in the land. We look like grasshoppers in our own eyes and in, and in their eyes as well. So they really, uh, they lost faith. They considered what they saw with their eyes more important than what the Lord said. But joshua and caleb they believed and yet joshua at the edge of the promised land where israel was uh, 40 years before they couldn't enter in because of unbelief yet joshua stands and the lord says to joshua be strong be courageous you can do this do not fear even if you see things with your eyes that look like they're overwhelming you don't fear and this is how faith works because that's when we raise up the shield of faith because by then trusting god in the insurmountable odds when things look like they can't work out we start trusting god it's then 
when the miraculous manifests and we open up heavenly miraculous power as we enter into the dimension of faith. And this is what we see with Joshua. I counted once and I can't remember exactly, but I think it was over 30 something wars that Joshua fought in Canaan as he was possessing the land. And a lot of Christians think that uh, the Christian life is just about uh, going to church, reading your Bible, praying, and then hoping for the best. No, the Christian life is about receiving the promises of God, understanding those promises, and then claiming those promises. You claim them. It's yours. It's your birthright. You, you're taking that inheritance by faith. It's yours. If you don't take it, the devil's going to steal it from you. That is what you have to do. Then the power of the shield, yeah? And here we talk about what does what what fear does you know fear absorbs fear opens the gap for destruction and this is always what happens when when we look at circumstances when we look at situations and we start fearing now job is is something that the traditional church likes to talk about a lot but if you really go and study the book of job uh, and you really look at what happened in this book in the spiritual was in job chapter 1 verse 10 there was a hedge around job job was fully protected because he was a righteous man now job was not a new covenant man um, he was not even an old covenant man as far as we know so job was just a man but he feared god and he had a hedge around him like we have today but that hedge that's around us is upheld by our faith it's upheld by what we believe. It is like that shield that we are lifting up. And what did Job say eventually? He said, for the thing that I greatly fear came upon me. And if you read in Job, you will notice this strange, peculiar thing where Job loves God. He's got this hedge around him. He's blessed. But then he's got this obsession that he thinks that his children are going to sin. He's got this obsession and he, and he keeps on giving or offering sacrifices for something that they haven't even done, but something that they might do. And this is fear. This is fear. And what happened was that fear actually opened a door. Uh, and and uh, we don't want to open doors. We want to keep God's hedge around us as we have that shield of faith. Uh, on the one side, we see that Job had this hedge around him. Um, and then on the other side, we saw that he was losing perspective he, he had a moment of weakness uh, then he said this thing I, I i greatly feared has come upon me so we have the enemy's dots this is a reality uh, the bible warns us and jesus warns us in john 10 10 he says the thief does come except to steal kill and destroy and what we must understand here is he will steal kill and destroy by stirring up circumstances and situations, by demonic powers, uh, forces in the dark world will come against us. And Hosea 4.6 warns us that people perish for a lack of knowledge. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And if we really don't know the truth, we cannot be free. If we don't have knowledge of God's word, of God's promises, of God's covenant, we will find ourselves in a very difficult situation when we're facing the fiery darts of the enemy. We can only lift up the shield of faith as we know God's word. We must understand, you know, in the traditional church for many years, uh, it was sort of assumed that it was God doing things. But here we've got it clearly. Jesus says, he says, look, I've come that you might have life in John 10, 10 and you might have it more abundantly that word abundant there is is the greek word perissos which means super abundant overflowing it's sort of like the overflow you can almost see this picture of psalm 23 where david says uh, the, my cup runneth over it's a god of more than enough not a god of of just enough but the fact is jesus says i've come to provide this life for you even in, in, in Luke 4, 18, he says, um, I declare to you now that it's the year of the Lord's favor. 
And we do, it doesn't look like that in the physical. You see, this is the problem. As we're doing Bible school and we're doing Bible courses, we hear what the pastors and the teachers are saying. We're saying, but it doesn't look like that. No, it doesn't look like that. Because there's a battle raging. That's why you need to get into spiritual warfare so that you can take what God has for you and for me. If it's to be, it's up to me in that sense because I have to make a decision to possess what God has for me. And if I have a lack of knowledge and I don't understand what's going on in my life, the devil will come in and steal, kill and destroy. And through 30 years of ministry, I've seen him so many times come in and steal people's lives even because of the fact that they did not know what to do in the circumstances. So what do you do when you experience dramatic tragedy or a, a, a dramatic attack in your life maybe you lose your job what do you do maybe the doctor tells you you've got some kind of disease on your body god forbid what do you do you go to god's word and you look at the promise and then you go like romans 10 17 says and you bring in faith that comes by the word and by the word of god and you and you meditate like it says in joshua chapter one uh, like like God said yes to Joshua, you're going to have to possess what you want to possess by meditating upon the word day and night. And then you're going to have to really take action from your side. Uh, here in the manual, it actually says that, that people get to, to a point where they have a wounded spirit, where they have a wounded soul, where they have a wounded will. And so many times in the church of Jesus Christ, we see this. We, we see people that are not able to function because they are wounded. What Are they discouraged? What's the problem? Are they under uh, condemnation? Have they suffered tremendous emotional hurt? What happened in their life? And what this does is it actually throws them into a position where the devil can actually legally come and steal, kill and destroy. And 1 Peter 5 says we must be sober, we must be vigilant. We must not allow the enemy to steal from us. We must not allow the enemy to steal from us. I like this last portion where it says we must think right. We must talk right. We must act right. We must be doers of the word. Joshua 1, 8, like I said, yeah, we must meditate on the word. We must make a decision. Uh, this is a, the, our victory that, that, that conquers the world. It's our faith. Whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. So... In the circumstances, in the situations, as you are the soldier of God, you've now got your, your, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You've got the breastplate of righteousness. You've got the helmet of salvation. You've got the belt of the truth. Now in this lecture, you are lifting up the shield of faith, which is covering, it will cover, it, the arrows won't even hit your breastplate. It won't even hit your helmet because you've lifted up, you've lifted up the, the, the shield of faith, the overarching shield of faith that protects the entire soldier but this is something that you have to raise up that shield you have to lift up that shield you have to go into god's word you have to study like it says here you have to be the guy that talks right you have to be the guy that acts right you have be have to be the guy that studies the word that stand upon that stands upon god's word you have to do that if you don't do it you won't you will never be able to raise up that shield of faith. So if you're not fully persuaded of, of what you believe at this stage, even I'm not judging you, I'm not criticizing you, but I'm saying do a study of God's word. Look at many of these lectures, fill yourself, make a decision because you've got one life to live and you've got one life to give. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is your life. So you don't want to find out at the end of your life that the Lord says to you, John, Peter, Jane, I gave you weapons and you never used it. I gave you so much. Like that guy that I once read about that was a wealthy man, but he never knew it. And he lived in utter poverty his entire life. It was only once he died. I mean, this guy never had food. He, he was sleeping on the streets. It was cold. It was only uh, once he died that he found out that he had an inheritance. This was so ironic because he had much, much more available than he ever needed he he would have had enough to give to others but he couldn't even have food at night or have warm shelter at night because he did not know what he had he couldn't go and possess it 
But now today, by the word of God, looking at the 66 books of the Bible, you and I, we have the word of God. We can read the word. We can understand it. We can ask the Holy Spirit to quicken it in our hearts. And then we can step into those areas of faith. We, we possess. I really pray that you will experience this as we are equipping you here in Bible school for victory. You're looking at these lectures and uh, you are equipped for victory. And we are talking about the armor of God. I trust that you will rise up as a soldier in the mighty name of Jesus and that you will stand upon the word of God and experience total breakthrough. Well, God bless you and thanks for watching this lecture. Please continue to watch these lectures and eat and feed upon the word of God. I will see you in lecture number five when we start talking about the attacking weapon. And that is the word of the sword in Jesus name. I'll see you in lecture five. God bless.